how could I knew that this would go so totally wrong? Didn't I look close enough at the details? Didn't I see the signs? Was I blinding too blindly, not seeing the edge I was standing at? It was back in the year 2013. Some of you might remember it as the great summer, a lot of sunshine, and all those new JavaScript frameworks popped up like mushrooms. And I went into this, I started as a young IT professional into my first project, and there I met him. Let's call him Andrew for a moment. He wasn't that tall, but he was really handsome, loving, easy to go with. So we worked on that project together, like fixed bugs, did everything we needed to launch, and I felt really, wow, this is really going on. So I thought, like, we go on well. We even started to spend our free time together. And I already imagined a bright, bright future of us, of things that would come, of new projects. So imagine that. And having this future in mind, I started to talk to him. What do you think? What's our future? And he, he wasn't even sure about his future about how this would turn out for him at all. So I started to like, what you wander around, like, how could this be? Like, I thought there would be a future. He thinks, oh, um, what's going on there? Isn't he? I felt like he was my hero. He was like doing everything and would be just perfect. And he always like, I thought he would take his sword. He would fight me. He always had this powerful shield. But all my dreams and hopes, they crashed. On a black Thursday in Paris, on a conference you all might know, with a big dong, 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 dong. And then we all stand there reconsidering all that we hoped for before. And we talked, and I said, like, how should this be? Like, I wanted to be together with you. And we figured out, of course, we could stay together, but this wouldn't make any of us happy anymore. So I had to do what many people do when they break up. I got a new haircut and I looked for new opportunities. So the haircut thing went really well. I also found new opportunities, but new company, same problem. So I went there and discovered their history. They have a website 11 years ago. They started really fresh, some people building this nice thing with the most modern technology at that time, PHP. So they did a lot there many people joining, a lot of things, new features. So it's a Q&A platform. You can put in questions, and many people will answer you and try to help you. And it's like kind of like Quora in America. For Germany, it's called Gute Frage. And with all those new teams in there, they realize there's a lot of coordination we have to do. And we have dependencies. We can't move on. It's complex. It has side effects. If we do something, we have to care about a lot of things. So what's helping? Processes. So doing a lot of processes, you have a release process. It takes you, in my feeling, half of the day, at least in my mind. And of course, this is killing innovation. If you want to move forward or do some fancy stuff, if you want to do some A-B testing or things, it's really hard to do. And especially if new people are joining the team and look at this, first it's slow. They don't even really want to teach anybody anymore how this is working, because it's difficult. So this person onboarding will then look at it like, this is Symphony 1. Point something? What? Let's migrate. And then you're like, yeah, how could you do having this huge monolith just migrate smoothly? This is not going to work. 
So three years ago, they decided, oh, sorry. So this is if you look at the website. Um, so 10 years ago, this was cool and fancy, had a lot of nice features, um, really helped people. But you had things like this, and you realized all those features we built and we can't maintain that anymore in the same speed. So what was fancy at that time? Microservices. So they realized we have to first deal with our backend to at least move that out of the way. So microservices was kind of fancy. You had this idea of keeping it really simple, stupid, and people will understand even in some years. So let's look how this like evolved in like a bit of higher perspective. So you start with your website all in one place, and you add features and features and features. It gets a bit like messy. And then you realize, hey, if we separate front end and back end, this will be better. So not that creepy anymore. But still, the back end gets messier with new functionalities, new technologies. And that was the point to decide, hey, let's use microservices. So they did that and just bundled everything in one little microservice. So the idea is to then be able to even throw it away in some years if you realize, hey, new technology would be much better here. So this then okay, was really nice. You have a microservice for the user, for the questions, for notifications. Nice. And the front end, the old PHP, it got even creepier. So at this point, really realizing, hey, there must be a change. And still feeling this left alone in my heart, I thought, like, this is the time to look for new stuff. Let's go out there. And to make it a bit short here in the conference, let's do a round of speed dating. Let's look at different approaches. So one approach is just like the hardcore approach of just cutting it. So you just cut it and do different applications. You might already do this if you have an administration area. So that's sometimes already this kind of approach. You have your normal website, and then you have some administration that is a completely different tool. So this is the first approach you can take. And it might work very well in the right ways. And you can just link in between so they feel or they behave like different applications, and you go through them. OK, so how can we now see if this approach is like helping us? So how can we rate that? We do what developers like to do. We do testing. So we wrote some tests for this. So let's run some tests against this. So we want to have team ownership. Nice. We can develop independently. Wonderfully. We can run it independently. No problem. It's even technology agnostic. We are not stuck with any technology. Two years, no problem. It's fast loading. You only load that part of the application the user is really needing. Native support, nothing special here. But if you want to have sharing some basics or be even modular, have some components, the boundaries might be very hard. So you can introduce something. But having really a corporate identity above all those, if they like spread to 5, 10, 15, might be a bit hard. And also, the user in, um, interaction between those pages is a complete page reload, so not that nice. So for the first run, six passing for failing. Feels like normal day. What can you do? You can use iframes. Yes. It solves it immediately in one day. But then you're stuck with iframes. You can have a CMS system. So for example, uh, Telefonica is doing that. They have a CMS system, and then they have completely different applications, and just share those. Working wonderfully, but still, you have those drawbacks. So let's go something different. So the first time in this, how can we have microservices in the front end came up. A first idea, I saw it from Autoscout they propose to have server-side includes. So they do templating on one server, and that server will grab out to all the other servers, taking the partials together and render it, and then put back the complete HTML. That's quite nice. So let's run the test again. This, the fast loading might be not that fast, as you have to grab out for all those. 
but might be okay. The native support, you have to have something special on the server. Some server side includes any language there that does this templating, but that might be okay. But still, you don't have a smooth user interaction with any new page you request. You have a complete page reload. Not really yet. So I consider, OK, this to serve at the server side. We are a bit stuck. We don't get all the test screens. So let's move on to the complete opposite of code. So that's how we know. So we share code. We do libraries, frameworks. Um, we might have a UI library at the toolkit, something like that. So just for fun, let's run the tests against that. It doesn't run independently, that's clear. It's not technology agnostic. You have to have some technology. It might not be that fast loading as you bundle, but all the others are met. Hmm. And even the fast loading, you can help with lazy loading. And to technology, you can be helping with web components, as we also heard before. So might be nice, but there might be something nicer. You already might heard about App Shell. So let's dig a bit into this approach. Um, someone is requesting your settings page. He's going to the server, and you don't turn back the complete settings page. You just give back the app shell. So this app shell will then realize, oh, he wanted to have the settings. Let's look where I can find those for him. So he goes to that one, and here he gets the manifest file. Don't confuse this with the web app manifest file. This is just a, something you create on your own and we'll just give back which information you need to load this. So the app shell will then grab those two, the bundle min JS and the style min JS, or CSS, sorry, and then it will initialize that. So this is also just custom code. You can use whatever you like. You can also go with what we saw yesterday with the Redux approach. Anything is fine there. Just share from like the parent app shell to the children, what information you need to pass, and what abilities you need to come back with callbacks or whatever you like. Great. So seeing this approach and yeah, run the tests against it. So it is technology agnostic only if you share some basics or want to be modular. This you have to choose. But for the rest, that's pretty nice. So after this speed dating thing, this might be someone for a second date. So on that second date, you might think of more going into depth about a bit of your past, what you feel, what you like, what you wish for. So in our case, we started in 2016 and continued in 2017 um, to have a locked out area. So this is just improved for Google and search engines. It needs to be very fast on that one impression where you have a question and you want to get those answers. And it's fine for us to have a single technology stack there. It's kind of like the first micro front end. But then for the locked in area, we need to search for something that is easier to have over several pages you request. So if you're a normal user, you might log in in the evening, see some new questions, give some answers. So this will go over several, several pages. So this should be really smooth and in have an engagement. And here we really want to be able to have different technologies because this is going huge. So after this, might be, might be an approach. So we choose that approach. And here is our current, current state. Um, you see, first, there's only the app shell. It's the laser. No, can't see. Can you see that? Yeah. So here you have the header. Down there is the footer. And this will always stay. So if you now click on something, you can see here it will always stay. And as the basics are there, the next page will always be very, very fast. So if you want to have a look at that, you can have an invitation. You just go to gutefrage.net and slash invitation, and you can see that if you look in. Great. So seeing that in comparison to what we had before, we also did a lot of other improvements, like have a responsive design, optimize for mobile. But you can see the first thing was a bit slower, but then we speed up, and we don't have that flashes anymore, and we have the technology. 
Great. I'll keep you with a second. So let's think about this, like having now this new thing going on, what might this look like in a test case? So here you already see this header, the footer, and then there is the microservice. So we could have this team ownership. We don't fully do it, but we can. We also could run independently. We are not doing it yet because we preferred other stuff to do first. But it's there. You can be technology agnostic um, just for the modules, for the shared stuff. We chose one. But that's kind of nice. So developing that for some months, we realized, OK, look at this. Like, Do a real review, a little retrospective. We now have a more complex environment. That's true. We have redundancy in some parts. As you have those micro parts, they need to have a bit of functionality that all of them needs. You have the build scripts that can be really painful. So a lot of our time went in there. Um, you need error handling. So if one page can't be or is not available, the server is down, something interfering, the user doesn't have a connection anymore. You have to handle this. But you also have the advantage you still have code running on his device. So if you can't access, this, access the page, you can at least tell him, hey, I'm sorry, it's not there, but here's a nice button, and you can retry. So at least if he's like in a tunnel, something is breaking, he at least has an option. And you have shared dependencies. So in this part, all your problems come a bit again. But on the other side, um, we have a faster onboarding there. It's much easier to understand, especially compared to this um, old PHP monolith. Um, it's independent, so that's what we wanted to achieve. It's also easier to test and faster to test because you're testing smaller parts, don't have to run everything all the time. Um, you can become resilient, so if one microservice isn't there, no problem. At least all the others are working. It doesn't bring everything down. And future proof. So that's the main thing we want to achieve here to be maintainable. Great. So now we're in this relationship, and maybe um, you experience that when people are very, very happy as a couple. They start this, I call it mission phase. Who of you knows this? Like people coming to you, and they're so happy that they also want to convince you to reach out. Any? Maybe some. OK, maybe you know those, or I don't like that in a person. But here on stage, at least, I try to help a bit if you want to do the same, if you're thinking about the same. So what's the first thing happy couples give other singles as recommendation? Be open. I hate that <laughs> every time someone's telling me that. But you're here, so being open, no problem. We got that. So next, look around. So I put all videos that helped me prepare to talk in a YouTube um, list. So you can just watch all the others. Many of those are much more in deep about which technology they used, how they did it with different frameworks. So you can look in that. And I also did a collection of all the links, so interesting articles, everything I found there. Um, that's all online. And then. Start dating. Look at those. Look how they um, they appear. How you like them. How you could um, realize how you can go on with them. Is there any possibilities? Or there are different companies that published or open sourced their version of how they are doing micro front ends. So that's nice. But don't go too far too fast. So start small. It's not. I think not a good idea to completely redo everything in one huge thing if you have a huge monolith. Start with maybe one page or one part of it. Um, you can even start very ugly with an iframe. If that's helping you for a moment, um, you can also um, hard code stuff. So it doesn't have to be a fully uh, independently running system as the first day. So start with something where you just have some little part and try to integrate it in your bigger application. 
also for us it helped us very much to stay in the same repository. I know it's very tempting that you start and hey, this is all independent completely with different Git repositories, especially for the beginning, it helps you very much to be on the same repository and stay there. So also for your IDE support, you also know that this mono repo stuff, so this really helped us. Um, what also helped us very much was naming conventions. So you can introduce prefixes, so you know every time uh, or every micro front end has its own prefix. So when something comes your way, you will always know, okay, this is um, from this service, so if I need to debug in there, I'll go there. It also helps you um, to have not so much configuration if you stick to a bit of convention there. And what also helped us is a living style guide. So we have pattern lab. That means every time we develop something, there's always an example code and code we use. So if some other developers think like, oh, the other team didn't, they built something nicely already, no problem. So you can go there. Great. So summing up, up if you think about this, if you're thinking about breaking up with your mon front end monolith, you can, but please start a new love story. Thank you.